So um, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Farley, who's going to share with us our county policies. Thank <laughs> you, Mr. Farley. Let's give Mr. Farley a little bit. Thank you, everyone. So today we're going to talk about the policies that are on the blue sheet that you'll be signing off on, if you would, please. Um, we'll talk about the paperwork that's necessary to execute each of these policies and what these policies mean, please. And all of the things we do, obviously, at Queen Anne's County Public Schools is for our children. And these policies are meant to protect our children, please. <clears throat> the first one we're going to talk about is child abuse and neglect. Um, and these are very important policies because you are the only one who is objective. Uh, you'll see these children every day. You'll notice differences in them that um, you might be able to report, please. <clears throat> so you might notice unexplained burns or fractures or abrasions on them you'll see changes from day to day um, and when you observe these things you have an obligation to report them uh, first by telephone or to call in uh, and then within 48 hours on a form you don't have a choice you have to report them and if you're not sure you have to report them um, and you obviously need to go and see Ms. Farnell and tell her and you have to call social services there is a policy that explains all of this and there is a very specific form there have been instances within the school where you might see someone do something inappropriate and you can't simply say, look, don't do that again. You have to report it. Um, or if you see circumstances where a child may be abused, obviously you have to report it, please. <coughs> cell phones, um, passing a a cell phone around and children giggling it could be a classmate you know you never know who that picture is of so um, our world is changing and we have to be suspect that it could be it, it doesn't really matter who it is children don't have the maturity uh, to make good decisions and so you have to intervene and with that comes a responsibility to report and to um, go see Mrs. Farnell and to s jump in to a situation that could be out of hand. So if you, if you hear something, you pull someone aside and you find out what's going on so that you can assist that child or you can find out if something is going on that may be inappropriate. Please. All of these things are covered in the policy. Um, you may, you may notice a child that's normally engaged uh, and happy that all of a sudden seems to be off to the side and gone inward. And obviously you would touch base with that child and find out what's going on. It may be that something happened that that child needs to see your counselor or have an opportunity to talk to someone one on one. But <clears throat> There could be something going on at home or something going on in the neighborhood that you need to check in on. <clears throat> but mental injury is included in abuse, please. And children who aren't getting enough to eat, who aren't being appropriately clothed, who are being neglected. Um, I don't know if you think about that, and we all feel bad for kids, but that could be a part of neglect. And so, again, you need to talk to Mrs. Farnell and you need to uh, report appropriately. <clears throat> so the reporting procedures, which are again covered in the policy, uh, you have to first report orally to the Department of Social Services and inform your principal. We talked about this, right? It's covered in great detail in the, in the policy. Um, and this includes volunteers, so obviously we're going to want to cover the volunteers that, that work with your school. And any doubt goes in the favor of reporting. I, I'm not sure, you know, report. Okay, next please. And then you have to use the form which is available. Um, 
with the Department of Social Services and because you're going to involve uh, Ms. Farnell, she'll help you get the forms to the right places, but it's spelled out. Okay? <clears throat> if you don't report, you can get in trouble. If you do report, you have immunity. Okay? You can't get in trouble if you report because that's your job. Okay? Okay? Oh. Yeah. You can get in trouble if you fail to report. You can okay. be sus that's okay. You can be suspended or dismissed if you fail to report suspected abuse. That's serious because you are the person in the daily life of the child. Okay, this is this is a new piece. It used to be just this. Now. We say sexual harassment, but it's really harassment. And we're going to spend a little bit of time on this. And this is the newish piece. Title IX used to be considered more about athletics, but it's really about every student's right to have a learning environment free of harassment, free of sexual harassment. That means that every student gets to come to work, to school rather, and not be harassed, sexually harassed at school. So that means that if there's sexual harassment between students, by the coke man, by, by anyone, and they come and tell you, you have to report it. You have to fill out the bullying harassment form. You have to tell Mrs. Farnell and we have to look into it. We have to conduct an investigation. Okay? And that's covered in the Title IX policy and we're going to talk a little bit more about it. <clears throat> sexual harassment. It's sometimes kind of squishy for people, like not real clear, but <clears throat> it began like in the 1960s um, with a case called um, Vincent um, and in which case the secretary worked for a bank manager and he, they were dating at the time and she said can I have a recommendation for a promotion and he said sure then they stopped dating and um, he wouldn't give her the promotion letter and so about, I don't know a couple months later um, he said, hey, if we start dating again, I'll give you that letter. And that was the very first case of quid pro quo, this for that. And, and so that was the first case of sexual harassment. And um, it continued to grow from there to same-sex sexual harassment in a case called Oncology versus Sundown Oil, which was men and men. And now, um, Pretty much anybody can harass anybody and, and it would be sustainable. So when we talk about harassment in, in sexual harassment, it could be racial harassment, it could be disability harassment, it could be um, national origin harassment. The truth is, if you respect the differences among people, um, you don't have to go out and you know, study the law you can just respect people and the differences among them and you'll be just fine but if you if you um, if you don't respect differences and you offend people um, you're likely to get yourself in a jam oftentimes this comes under the cloak of humor when people share jokes by email like disability jokes or racial jokes it doesn't belong at work and we're going to talk a little bit more about that but it doesn't belong at work, okay? Uh, could you go back one more, please, Teresa? Um, so, students, staff, harassment, learning environment, work environment, it doesn't belong in a learning or work environment. It's all, it's all under the big umbrella of discrimination, okay? and it should be reported and investigated. Thank you. So we talked about quid pro quo, but hostile work environment, hostile environment. It doesn't mean everybody woke up grumpy on Monday morning, okay? Uh, 
hostile environment. What do you what do you think that means? Yes. Somewhere where you could feel threatened. Where you feel threatened? Any other ideas? That's a good that's a you feel threatened. Any other ideas? Yes. Feeling uncomfortable. Feeling uncomfortable. Well, undercurrent an undercurrent attitude. That's another good description. So hostile environment means that there's a workplace that sort of has a disfavor by their actions. So let's say let's say that it treats people in a protected class in a less favorable way, much like you guys are talking about. So some examples of that might be treats women less favorably, treats people from a certain country less favorably. That would be hostile towards some, a protected class. Examples of that might be one case where a head librarian had a different dress policy for women uh, that subjected them to an uncomfortable situation. or. Um, uh, you know, anything along those lines. Uh, in Onkali versus Sundowner Oil, a man complained that he was working with other men who were threatening him and they did nothing. They said, ah, boys will be boys. And so that case was sustained. So it's just exactly as was described where a protected class of people is treated less favorably that's a hostile work environment, has nothing to do with actual hostility. It only has to do with um, a less favorable treatment. Okay? Thank you. How do you tell somebody to stop? Pardon? How do you tell somebody to stop? Loudly. Loudly. In writing. Any way you like. But please do it. Okay? If, if, what if you're really shy? What if you just can't quite muster the confidence to say, stop doing that? I'll try harder. Try harder. <laughs> <laughs> Send an email, talk to Mrs. Farnell, you know, get a buddy to come with you, whatever you need to do, but please say stop. Okay? Come to Human Resources. Hey, I'm having trouble saying stop. This person's just scary to me, okay? But it's okay. Go ahead, next please. Drug-free workplace. That means <coughs> you may not, first of all, it's federal law, okay? You, you, can't, you can't take illegal drugs or bring illegal drugs into the workplace. We do pre-employment testing for all of our jobs. Um, can't use alcohol, but we'll talk more about that. And we do random testing for um, classifications of drugs or there are jobs that require that testing. Next, please. So you know you can't <laughs> do these things. <laughs> uh, okay. And you can be suspended or dismissed if you violate the drug-free workplace policy. So tobacco-free school environment, that means you can't use or sell tobacco products, including e-cigarettes, 24 hours a day on school property. So those who use these products, including vapor devices, um, need to go off school property and, and off of, out of our vehicles. Um, there are all kinds of devices now apparently and it even goes over to uh, the drug stuff apparently they have these little paper things you put on your tongue that contain um, you know like uh, marijuana oils and uh, you know so I'm, I'm always learning uh, it's amazing to me <laughs> okay next please dating um, so, <coughs> yeah <laughs> so um, the bottom line is you can't date your students and you shouldn't create a relationship that diminishes your professional authority in front of your students. Uh, okay?
I think this one's pretty clear. Any suspicion of dating or inappropriate relationships um, has to be reported to human resources. Okay? Delinquent acts uh, of a serious nature are important because it's hard to say what you might see in a child's backpack in their pocket. You could be an important intervener in a serious act. You might notice something uh, and it is you who could stop a, a very serious problem. So if you see any of these delinquent acts, you have to report it. Um, there have been instances where a teacher saw something and stopped something very bad from happening. And you're going to probably hear, if you haven't already, from Mr. Pinder um, about the crisis management um, process. So, for instance, if you saw someone in possession of a firearm, if you saw someone um, with evidence of sexual assault, these things matter a lot. Cell phones that we talked about a few minutes ago, you, between you, see a lot. And we're asking for your assistance. And we're asking you to please report delinquent acts or offenses committed by people uh, who are under 18 years of, old, years of age. Please. It's your responsibility. This part can be challenging because we're asking you to tell on yourself. But remember, we background check for a reason. So we're going to get updates. So, so if, if you have any of these circumstances, <clears throat> any of these crimes, uh, crimes of a sexual nature, crimes involving weapons, drugs, crimes against property, hate crimes, money crimes, criminal traffic violations, you need to report it. And you can provide some clarity and circumstance regarding these events. And we'll look at the relationship of the um, circumstance to your job and your, your ability to perform your job. Everybody's human, um, but get it on the table. Um, and, and don't think that uh, we won't hear about it. It seems to be a pretty small county, frankly. Uh, so so try, not to, uh, try not to think that it's not going to go unnoticed. Just being honest, okay? Thank you. This is another big one. Uh, acceptable use of electronic networks. It's pretty amazing to me uh, what some folks do uh, when, they're, when they're alone. Um, and uh, no, it didn't happen at this uh, school district, but uh, late at one night, some folks decided to have a Xerox your uh, rear end contest to see <laughs> <laughs> to, to see who could come up with the best picture. Uh, I was frankly uh, surprised that it didn't break the glass, but um, <clears throat> but they did leave the uh, evidence on the counter, so uh, it wasn't too hard to figure out that it happened. Uh, but that would be an inappropriate use of office technology, and <laughs> and <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, people also use uh, <laughs> devices, electronic networks, to send maybe a joke about dis uh, disabilities, about, um, about race. And then you've put your name on it, and the name of the people who sent it to you, and the name of the people you sent it to. And if there was a manager's name on there, it might turn out to be a hostile work environment, which is a tolerance for certain kinds of humor that are inappropriate and discriminatory. I would remind you that <coughs> the consequence for an, a uh, violation of the uh, acceptable use policy would be a, a um, loss uh, of, or short term or permanent loss of your network access. How would you like to do your job without network access? It's a right, or it's a privilege, not a right. And I would remind you that there is a long history in backups of everywhere you go and everything you do. Please be responsible. You've signed, you've signed acceptance of your appropriate use knowledge. Please be responsible. It's an email. QACPS email is for professional use, not for personal use. If you have personal email, that's what that's for. Uh, so use professionalism. 
you know, especially if you're talking to parents, um, it's, you know, it's not supposed to be used for absence reporting. It's not supposed to be used for um, promoting your personal business. That's what the policy says, okay? Ethics is really pretty simple. You can't use your position to promote your personal benefit, all right? That means jobs for others or um, <coughs> uh, any personal benefit, financial, your spouse, your own personal business, etc. Thank you. This is hard. <laughs> People aren't nice sometimes on social media. I know that comes as a shock, but, <laughs> but um, don't diminish your professional image and your professional authority by what you put on social media. Try to stay out of the fray. Um, so that means uh, if you want to maintain a social media presence, keep it professional and don't put pictures on there that others can see that are less than professional. Um, it's, if you just kind of keep it that simple, I would urge that you would, in the end, prevail. Okay, now there's, on the next slide you're going to see there are some Facebook for Dummies things. I didn't write them. Uh, I think they've been recommended by others. Um, you, you, you have the right to speak as a person, as a citizen, but as an employee of the Queen Anne's County Public Schools, we do have a social media policy. We have a reputation to protect. We have parent relationships, community relationships, and we have an obligation to protect our students. And that is our stake in this, okay? Next, please. So, all of the policies that are on this blue sheet, you're about to sign for. The, any single one of them, I am happy to go to right now and walk you through it, okay? We've just covered the top layer. <clears throat> so, I want to talk to you for a moment about the Americans with Disabilities Act which we didn't cover, the Americans with Disabilities Act says that people will have the right to, if they're qualified for the job, they can have a reasonable accommodation. And a reasonable accommodation says that um, we will help you, if you're qualified, to be able to perform the job. So we're working hard to be able to get that process in place and um, if you have specific questions, I urge you to talk to me. Or if you have a, a condition that needs accommodation, I urge you to talk to me. Um, the policy is on the website. Would anybody like to see it? Okay. <laughs> bullying, harassment, and intimidation. Are you all familiar with the bullying policy? Okay. And you all under would you like to see it? Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Child abuse and neglect, we talked about that. You understand it? Yeah. <laughs> um, you understand dating and sexual relationships, delinquent acts, drug and alcohol, employee use of social media, electronic mail, ethics. Non-discrimination, self-reporting, sexual harassment, Title IX, tobacco-free school environment. Now, let's go on, if you would, please. So you know you have um, 10 sick leave days per year and uh, three personal leave days per year. The um, inclement weather, I believe this is still the case. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
as we get ready to change seasons. No, not the case? 90 minutes are on. So, okay, so I will update this slide. Thank you. 30 minutes. Yes, 30 minutes within the 90 minute block. So we are to record at 8.30, then, and our students come in at 10.05 on a delay, then they would come at 9.35. Right, right. Am I right, guys? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A half hour before the students before get here. On our 30 board. minutes before students report. Yep. There we go. 30 minutes. <laughs> 30 minutes. So again, on this 90 minute delay, 30 minutes before students report. Yes. Okay, thank you. And that's correct. Contact administrator if you can't arrive within 30 minutes of the start time. Okay. Next, Can please. Email that statement. Can sure. Email it to you? Yeah, sure. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that if you've been absent for three days, you have to um, inform human resources because it kicks in the family medical leave time if you've been here for a year. You don't qualify for family medical leave if you haven't been here for a year. Okay? You know about this little blue clock? The blue clock is your friend. <laughs> you know if you go here, you um, you can see your leave balances? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Hello. Question. I thought you were just saying hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you explain doctor's notes? I don't know when to have them, when not to have them. Explain when? The doctor's notes. Are we supposed to have doctor's notes? Oh, doctor's uh, Right. So if you are going out on FMLA, right. you would have to have a doctor's note. Right. So you've been out three days or more. If you're coming back from, ex from an absence under FMLA, you have to have a doctor's note to return to work. We need to know you're okay to, and okay to return to work. Um, that's the basic line. No. no. I'm sorry? I've always been confused about that too because I was told at one point that, you know, you said it was three days. I was told at one point that it didn't matter if it was three weeks. I thought this was three consecutive days, but somebody else told me um, that it didn't have to be three consecutive days. Like if you're absent a day in October, a day in December, a day in no. February. Isn't it seven? Seven. <laughs> I always heard it was seven days, yeah. and then you had it. Like you were out you, seven absences. See, we don't so, so let me let me repeat the question and try to clarify. The confusion is about when a doctor's note is required for family medical leave absence. And the truth is, drum roll, three days. It does it doesn't matter if they're consecutive or non consecutive. What matters is it's the same illness. Now if if Generally speaking, it's three consecutive. If you were having chemotherapy uh, and you had a number of absences related to that, then it would be, it could be non-consecutive, but generally it's consecutive. So don't worry about the non-consecutive generally. Uh, you would, if you had a serious ongoing intermittent uh, absence, you would be talking to Teresa Steinheis. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, just to be clear, it is almost always consecutive days. Three, doctor's note. Absence, coming back to work, doctor's note. Otherwise, no doctor's note. Just one day here and there? No doctor's note. Everybody okay? Hi. So, is that the same? Like, if you are, because you're allowed to use seven of your absences for your children, for your family. Like if your husband's sick or your children are sick, you can stay home under that. Um, so is that the same? Would you still need a note if you're out with them? I bl <coughs> family medical leave can be used for a family member. That's why it's called family right. medical leave. So if it's not if you're not family medical leave is if you're out for for beyond three days. That's correct. For the same for the same illness. So why don't I? put something together and and come back and visit you and talk more about this. It's, I think it's more difficult because those of us with children, 
who, I mean, obviously we're going to be out more because we have kids. So, I mean, most of all my sick time doesn't get used for myself. It gets used if my kids are sick. So it seems as though there are a lot of questions about absences related to care for your family members and you want to understand the rules better. Yeah. So Mrs. Farnell, may I come back to visit and talk about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Thank you very You're much. Very welcome. Okay. So the the only thing we really haven't covered Oh, does everybody have their badge still? Did anybody lose it or the dog ate it or anything? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> so if you need a new badge, you walk one block up. If you lost it, you pay five bucks to get a new one, okay? Um, I do want you to know uh, the negotiated agreements have been revised. They're all, they are all on the... Um, Human Resources web page under a Human Resources Negotiated Agreements. You can click on them and read them if you want. Um, and then selling to children and parents is really just about uh, instructional materials and making sure that the uh, content supervisor has approved them uh, so that we're, yeah, so that we're not uh, supporting materials that are inconsistent with the uh, pedagogy that they are supporting, okay? Uh, and then um, student behavior inter uh, interventions uh, is really just about those interventions that we are using presently, okay? Is there anyone who is uncomfortable with any aspect of this sheet that they don't know enough? If you're okay, please sign this. I'd like to collect them and take them back. I want to thank you for everything you do every day uh, and the uh, little minds that you're shaping. <laughs> Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you.